So as you know recently, I've been trying out the new mod to see what I can come up with while also looking at the community notes to see what might be trending. And as such, I've come across a mod that can allow you to receive 50% of super back via your phone grenades. This mod being the NG Converter mod which can only be unlocked via the recaster station at level 15. For what it offers, this small mod can be a game changer if you know how it works and how to fully maximise it. In our case, we are going to be using the Shards of Galena with the mod for near instant super and if you were around when the Shards were first released then you should know what I'm guessing at here. Hello everyone, 3 here here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build for this week's content. I hope you're all keeping safe out there as today we are going to be focusing on the NG Converter mod Uniqueness and crafting a build that will allow hunters to spam supers in a near instant if you can pull off the timing of it. This build is achievable for all players but it will require you to grind out specific stats on your armour as certain areas of the build will require you to make some sacrifices. In game players, this can be extremely useful in content such as raids, nightfall ordeals or even dungeons when you just want to clear out an area as effectively as possible. So with that out of the way, the subclass we will be going with will be the way of a thousand cuts to make use of the knife trick and super in general when combined with the shard of Galenor. What I plan to achieve with the build is to use shards, my super and the NG converter mod to constantly replenish my super uptime to around a 80 to 100 super recharge rate in a near instant. That part there is quite easy to achieve with the right mods that I will go over later and as long as you have the grenade regen mods at your disposal then you'll be halfway to your goal. For the rest of the tree though you can leave it there and move on to the next part or you can invest into the nice trick and combine that with the art affinity shards of Galenor to make use of the impact induction perk or enhanced version and then further making use of playing fire, burning edge and gambler's dodge which you can then go ahead and create a near infinite cycle of grenade regen energy as long as you use your melee and kill said enemy with the melee while they're burning. Doing that option there will give you another route of getting your grenades up and running again if your weapon isn't enough to take on certain enemies but do be warned that there is a cooldown to use an impact deduction which is around 3 seconds after each time you melee so be sure to wait a few seconds before doing it again. Now for grenades I've turned the incendiary nades for their damage, blast radius and overall effectiveness for clearing out areas and damaging enemies. If I have to be honest this is the only grenade for the subclass which will offer the most for what you're looking for as trip mines are good if you can stick them but are easily avoidable while swarm grenades have great tracking but are weak in terms of damage but you can decide what fits best for you. For weaponry you ideally want to have weapons that are fully mass worked so you can produce orbs that will correspond with the charge with light mechanic. How you go about this is down to you so be sure to pick a weapon set that can proc orbs easily and effectively while providing you with enough stopping power to counter others. For my weaponry I'm sticking with a close range SMG or shotgun a mid to long range bow and a grenade launcher for extra DPS against heavies. My primary slot has the exit strategy SMG which is a ritual weapon you can get from completing a certain task from Drifter. It has a good magazine size and perk combination and the SMG is surprisingly very effective against major and minor enemies as the damage you can do can quickly add up and works out great for mopping up. Although shotgun or fusion rifle would work out more for me I found that the weapon works a lot more better when you head into a group of enemies and rely on its two perks, Threat Detector and Surrounded, for a big damage buff and an increasement in reload speed, stability and handling speed. These two perk combos can easily allow you to proc orbs of light at a fast pace when you just need it there and then and although damage won't be the greatest against ultras or bosses, that's not a problem as the weapon isn't going to be used for that anyways. It's simply going to be used for pocket orbs quickly so we can build our stacks up and counter those in close quarter effectively. For secondary I'm using the Trinity Ghoul Bow with the new catalyst and let me tell you something, this weapon catalyst slaps like it's fixed one of the biggest issues of the weapon which was pocket is exotic which beforehand required you to do so via landing a headshot which was achievable but wasn't all that compared to the Limonok Bow which was much more effective at what it did. 
The catalyst now fixes that where you can still proc it via headshots but you can also proc it via arc abilities so arc bolt, charge melee hits, arc supers or just getting a kill with the weapon even if it's not a headshot. And this here makes the weapon be on par or even above the monarch bow with how effective it's now become with taking out groups of enemies in a short amount of time. You'll see it from everyone. This weapon can clear out and chain lightning to every mob you land it on with ease and upon a successful kill with it, it will provide you with another charged arrow over and over again. This is what I'll be using for 100% of the time as the chain lightning will help with building up my super abilities and my abilities on the fly. Plus, getting multi kills with the bow will always land me an orb of light which will affect my super regen as well. Everything about the weapon and build will allow me to stack up and prevent enemies from overrunning me while also allowing me to get all the necessary parts in place and execute it successfully. Thanks to this one catalyst, it not only helps make the build much easier to use but it also makes the weapon that was looked down upon relevant again. For our heavy, I've gone with the interference grenade launcher with spike rounds, grave robber and four quarts. Spike rounds and four quarts make quite a killer combo for stacking damage and I'll be using this against bosses primarily with great effect. Sadly, my one did roll with grave robber which can work with the build for my phone knife but to be honest, that perk fits a bit more better on a close range weaponry to where it can really feel at home. For stats, this is where everything will start to make a great effect on the build and some sacrifices will most likely be need to be made if you don't have the armour to support you. Both my recovery and resilience are in 40 ranges which is very low for PvE content but still usable as long as you don't do the higher light level that's above your range. My recovery is on the brink of hitting 50 and all I need to do on my end is fully masterwork one more piece of my gear to achieve that. But I'm not going to do so because my armor piece I currently have doesn't really have the greatest of stats. The same for my intelligence stat as well but my discipline stat is at a 80 for a 41 second cooldown and this is important as the higher we can max this stat out the faster we can get our grenade up and running again and thus use our grenade mods and super combo all together. Now the problem with this is that I can't go any higher than this as my stats have reached as far as it can go. My mod slots have all been taken up as well and even if I do have space left over, it would mean I would need to sacrifice a stat of mine to reach max level. From the versions I've seen, players have managed to get their discipline stat all the way to 100 but had really low stats in resilience and recovery which hurts the build a lot in terms of where you can use it. In many ways, if you stick to around the 80 to 90 stat range for your grenade regen while having some recovery and resilience left over, say for example in the 40 to 50 ranges, you should be able to go ahead and use this build in the high level content with a bit more ease in mind as long as you're happy with making those necessary sacrifices. For armor pieces, which will need to be this season and last season armor, you will need to have 3 solar affinity pieces with one allowing you to carry the supercharged mod and another for the charged up mod. You'll then need one void affinity for the energy converter mod and a arc affinity shard or galano so you can slot in the impact induction if you wish. Please also be aware that depending on what your stat levels are for reaching the build numbers, you may need to master work your gear just to reach the necessary levels so please be aware of this and look at what armor pieces you have and which ones are worth fully investing in before doing so. So with all that being said, let's move on to the mods. Head, Discipline, Enhanced Scatter Projectile, Submachine Gun, Ammo Finder and Charged Up Mod. Arm, Discipline, Enhanced Impact Induction Mod. Chest, Discipline, Inferno Whip and Supercharged Mod. Leg, Discipline and Energy Converter Mod. Cloak, Concussive Dampener, Enhance Ashes to Assets, Innovation and Taking Charge mod. If you have everything as shown within the video then you should now be ready to go ahead and test the build out to see if it works to the way you want it to. Now like I mentioned earlier in the video, the build can allow you to gain 100% super energy back when you use a super and energy converter mod in conjunction with each other. But this can vary at times depending on how many kills you get with your super first for the effect to go all in. 
As shards of Galanor will slowly regen your super after being used, you will need to throw your grenade straight after so that you get the 50% super energy bonus back, but your super bar will continue to regen until it reaches given limit, which will depend on how many enemies you've taken out. Now for example, if you took out around 4-5 to five enemies in one super and they offered around 10% energy back to you, then you use your times 5 stacked of charge with light with your grenade, then you should get your super back up to around the 90-100% to 100 ranges as long as you net the multi kills and don't miss so much. This in practice is very easy to do since your weaponry will offer you the chance to produce orbs of light to help you get your stacks up and also provide super at the same time so even if you do hit the 80-90 to 90 range, this can be recovered via other means. Of course, if you hit a small group of enemies with your super and then use your grenade straight after, you may not get a huge amount back because of how many you killed. Alternatively, if you want to guarantee you get your super energy back up to around 100% easily, make sure that after you use your super and you throw your grenades, that you throw your grenades at the enemy so that you can trigger your mod, Enhance Ashes to Assets or Ashes to Assets, and then gain back a large to medium amount of super energy back. This method here will cover you in all areas and make sure that you regain your super at its highest there and then. The setup like I said is perfect for PvE content against waves or large number of enemies you face as you can pull off super after super, one after each other, as many times as you like as long as you can hit those shots. And also make sure your perks, mods and super all work in conjunction with each other. Using something like this in strikes is pretty much an overkill at that point. But using it in Nightfall for example, where content is a bit more rewarding and enemies are a lot more tougher can prove to be useful for grinding out such content quickly. However, the build will suffer in higher level content depending on how your stats are focused, which I mentioned in the stats section earlier. Do you remember that the ideal discipline range is the 80 to the 100 range, with the 90 range being ideal for getting a grenade up and getting the boost that you need? Simply getting it to the 80 range for me was the sweet spot I found, but it was tough to reach as most of my armor wasn't focused around that area. Plus, my resilience and recovery stat was hit as well, which was expected and it wasn't so bad, but it does mean that I can't really use it fully in Ordeal Nightfalls and Nightmare Hunts as I will get hurt a lot more in these type of content. Of course, the results of the build from my end to your end will vary and if you are happy with making a few sacrifices here and then, then you should be fine with taking on these high tier content with ease. But overall, a great and interesting revival of an exotic that was once known for doing this pre-nerf, thanks to this now simple and easy to get mod. I'm quite grateful for Bungie introducing this mod with his large effect as it makes the following exotic not only usable again, but interestingly worthwhile to main and is not broken or OP in any way, since you have to reach a certain requirement for it to work in full effect. I can tell you right now that this mod will be favoured by a lot of players in the next few seasons when stacked with other exotics that also affect supers, and when that time comes, I will welcome it with open arms. So if you enjoyed the video, then do please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.